Hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to Inglebard. A few episodes back, I did a comparison between the arcade and Sega Master System versions of the original Shinobi. In that episode, I mentioned the terrible NES version of the game, and also alluded to another version, and that one was the PC Engine version of the game. And that's right, I say PC Engine version only because the game didn't come out in America, so there's no TurboGrafx-16 Shinobi. Anyway, today I'll take a look at the arcade and PC Engine versions of the game. Here's the specs of the arcade and PC Engine hardware for you to look at while I talk about the game itself. More. So as I covered last time, Shinobi hit the arcades in 1987 on Sega's System 16 arcade hardware. In the game, you play as Ninja Joe Musashi, who has both long-range attacks and close-range melee attacks. He can power up both his long and close-range attacks by rescuing a particular kid in each of the game's main levels. Because, you know, of course a kid who has been captured and is tied up just happens to have a sword and gun on him. You know, that he didn't use to stop the ninjas from getting him in the first place! Anyway, Shinobi is broken down into five missions that contain multiple stages each, including a boss encounter and a bonus stage. In 1989, someone in Asmic thought, Hey, what if we release Shinobi for the PC Engine? But make it shit. Now, Asmic did release Shinobi for the PC Engine in 1989. And on first glance, you might think that they actually did a pretty decent job with this. Visually speaking, it kind of resembles the arcade one. I mean, it has fewer colors, it has less detail on the backgrounds and the characters and pretty much everything that you see in the game, and everything's darker in it, but overall, it looks kind of like Shinobi. And then when we get to the sound, well, I have to admit that Asmic did a fantastic job on that. We've got most of the arcade music, and all of the music sounds really good in this game. So what's the problem then? Well, strap in, because here we go. Asmic removed every single stage from Mission 2. Mission 2 is just gone. All of the bonus rounds have been taken out of the game. They're gone. About half of the game's enemies have been removed. They're gone. And now we get to the worst two offenses. The power-ups are gone. And then, the worst of all, is that the close-range melee attacks... Gone removed, and this very much changes the way that you have to play the game. And I'll go into more detail on all of these during the commentary. So recording methodology for this one is pretty simple. I use save states before every round to ensure that I could keep the games as closely in sync as possible. Other than that, I don't have a whole lot to say, so let's do this! Mission 1 Right off the bat, the mission briefing graphics look pretty janky on PCE, worse than they did on the Sega Master System version. The colors on PC Engine are, as I said, much darker, and the animation is a little... off. We of course also lose the parallax scrolling, which is not much of a surprise for a PC Engine title. But overall, the look of the game is decent, and if the other stuff worked right, I'd be totally okay with it. Also, check out the animation when Joe jumps between upper and lower levels. They even cut out the animation frames of him jumping high and jumping low, which was present in the arcade and Sega Master System versions. One side, Ken O! On the second stage of Mission 1, things again look decent on PCE, but you really start to get a sense of just how much the lack of close-range attacks hurts this game. Shinobi without close-range attacks is kind of like Star Wars without lightsabers. Fighting the guys with the swords is totally different in this version of the game. For the green or greenish ones, you want to basically hit them from as far away as possible on PCE. For the blue ones, you have to get as close as possible to make them attack and then shoot them. And at this point, you may be thinking that I'm crazy and that PC Engine Shinobi seems great for the hardware it's on. To which I'd say, hey, it's not nice to call people names, you a**hole. But seriously, it's gonna get worse, I promise. You can also see here on PC Engine how much simpler the ninja magic effects look. They're way pared down. And here we have Ken O, whose stage and, well, self, are less detailed on PCE. The straps holding up his shin guards are removed from the PC Engine version, where they're instead apparently held up by sheer willpower. The Marilyn Monroe poster from the back wall is also missing and Ken O's fireballs look much simpler on PCE, too. And finally, for some reason, 
he has much more health on PC Engine, and Ninja Magic does more damage to him. Welcome to bonus stage. Here we are at the bonus stage, and man does it look bad on PC Engine. I mean, just a black screen? Come on, Asmic! Anyway, obviously the bonus rounds have been cut from the PC Engine game. I assume they were cut because of the small Hue card capacity of 384 kilobytes, or 3 megabits, and that's a real shame for a game that was released in December of 1989. So as I mentioned earlier, Asmic cut all of Mission 2 from the PC Engine version of the game. So what should I show here to keep things interesting? I know, let's look at the butt-ugly Amiga version of Shinobi. Obviously, the Amiga version of Shinobi looks like it was drawn by a 4-year-old and has a frame rate that would be jealous of a flipbook. But as ugly as this game is, it's still kind of fun. I'm going to show a few different parts of this game, so we're not going to see them synced up with the arcade version, I just want to show you a little bit of it here and there, so you can get a feel for what this one was like. And what's kind of funny is that almost everything that's missing or cut from the PC Engine game is actually present in this one. Now while we look at these, I'll say that aside from Mission 2 containing all of my personal favorite levels in the game, even more importantly, Mission 2 served as sort of a training ground on how to come to grips with tougher enemies. In the arcade version of Shinobi, Mission 2 gently bumps up the difficulty, being noticeably tougher than Mission 1 and noticeably easier than Mission 3. And I've gotta say, you know what I'd rather play than a version of Shinobi missing Mission 2? A version of Shinobi containing only Mission 2! Alright, so the Amiga game here. Yeah, like I said, super ugly, terrible frame rate. But you know what it does have? It's got parallax scrolling, it's got pretty much all of the enemies from the arcade game, it's got all of the stages from the arcade game, it's got the bonus rounds, it's got all of the music from the arcade game. I originally covered Amiga Shinobi a while back in a series that I was doing, in which I looked at a good arcade port to the Amiga, a bad one, and a fugly one. And can you guess which one Shinobi is? Anyway, speaking of that extremely low-viewed series, I think I'm going to give it another shot in the near future. So we'll get to look at some more Amiga arcade ports pretty soon. And don't worry, they're not all as bad as Shinobi. Some of them are a lot worse. Mission 2. Finish. Welcome to bonus day. Mission three. Okay, here we are at Mission 3 and back to the PC Engine. Now visually, this stage is kinda meh on the NEC machine. The parallax scrolling is gone, of course, and the colors are a little weird. When I go as far as saying that this stage looks better on the Sega Master System. What's not readily apparent here is the giant jump in difficulty on PC Engine. If Mission 1 was, say, a gentle nudge from behind on level ground, the next mission is a push out of an airplane flying at 10,000 feet above a lake of acid lined with undissolvable spikes. And you know what? F*** it, the spikes are also on fire. And hey, we have our first missing or modified enemy in this stage. The big military guys with bazookas have been cut out, 
and replaced with the little gun-wielding guys from the first area. Only now, they take two hits to kill, because we're pretending they're the other guy. I'll also note here that the behavior of the ninja enemies, only the yellow ones, can be a little bit different on PC than the arcade original. In Mission 3-2, we are once again missing the bazooka enemies, who have been replaced again by the handgun guys. Dealing with the sword enemies here at different heights is kind of a nightmare on PCE with its lack of close-range melee attacks. You've got to play the game much differently. Enemy positioning is pretty close to the arcade original for a while, but that's going to diverge a bit soon. Which, obviously it has to since so many enemy types were removed. But hey, at least the music is pretty good on PC Engine, right? Visually, this area is again pretty close to the arcade original on PC Engine. The enemies are mostly the right types in the right places. What's missing is the fence in the background, because apparently drawing sprites behind a fence is just a little too difficult for the PC Engine. And this stage is pretty much multicolored ninja paradise. Without close range combat, Dealing with them is much tougher than it should be. You'll see in the arcade version, which is a pretty hard game, it's way easier to get through the level. Hey, look, it's Mandara, everyone's favorite shinobi boss. This fight is a total train wreck on PC Engine. What gives? Why is there only one row of statues on that system? I mean, the technical answer is because they're all made out of sprites and are already exceeding the sprite limit when they should be made out of tiles instead. There would have been just a plain single color background behind them if they were made out of tiles, but the trade-off would have been worth it, I think. Even the little SMS version was able to fill the screen with multiple columns of moving animated statues. On PCE, nope, you get one row. The boss itself passed the statues, it has larger fireballs and a smaller vertical area to move within on PC Engine. But overall, Mandara is kind of a cakewalk on PCE compared to the other versions of Shinobi. Watch me lose this bonus stage in the arcade game, while the PC Engine takes a little break. Mission 4 Man, this stage looks... Awful on PCE. 
the backgrounds lack pretty much any detail at all. Why remove the mountains? You didn't take the mountains out of the prior stage that had mountains. And why take what I'm told is a bright tan ground area and make it into what I'm told is orangey brown? This level looks like it's from a beta version of the game instead of a complete one, but nope, this is how Asmic released it. Also, this stage is another ninja fest, so you get to suffer through fighting them with nothing but your shuriken again. There are sword enemies mixed in, which makes this level just super fun to play through on PCE. As we head toward the end of the level here, you'll see our next missing enemy. The skeleton zombie wizard guys that throw those bone-looking projectiles at you. That brings our missing enemy count up to two. Or three if we include the black turtle boss that's missing from the PC engine. You know what? Let's say three. Anyway, on PCE, they replaced them with a new gray ninja that's a little more aggressive than the other colors. After that uggo stage, we're greeted with one that looks a lot better on PC Engine, and comes off pretty well, all things considered. I have the usual complaint about the sword guys being overly tough to get rid of with only shuriken, though, and those jumpy demonic looking guys with long arms and short legs from the arcade game have been replaced with a recolored version of the Spider-Man type enemies from the earlier stages, which brings our missing enemy count up to four. From a gameplay standpoint, I'll mention that the jumps are pretty easy to make in the PC Engine one, so it's definitely got that over the Master System version at least. Okay, Mission 4-3 is much the same as Mission 4-2 from a quality standpoint. Asmic did okay on PCE, and this level mostly feels like the arcade one, except for the whole lack of short range. Okay, I'll stop with that now. The jumping Spider-Man type enemies come at you a little faster and from far more off-screen than the weirdo arcade demon guys though, so that does change things up a little bit here. Here's your favorite crustacean-styled samurai and mine, Lobster! He's just a tinge slower on PCE, and he has a little more health, and gets damaged more by ninja magic. Welcome to bonus stage. Here I am, playing the bonus stage, post-Mission 4 in the arcade version of Shinobi. On the PC Engine, here's a black screen for you to enjoy until we start the next mission. Okay, last mission! Hey look, they remembered the mountains this time on PC Engine! Gold star for them! Also, why does this stage look so low effort on PCE? The ground texture is just kind of a mess of wavy lines, instead of looking like dried dirt dotted with rocks as in the arcade original. The changed up enemy types also kind of hurt this level on PC Engine. It's overloaded with ninjas to replace the missing enemy type because everyone loves ninjas, right? Right?
Here we are in Stage 5-2, also known as the Stage of the Flying Ninjas. Once again, Asmik has arranged it so that there is no background element in front of Joe Musashi. Notice in the arcade game, he walks behind the grass, while on PCE, the grass is behind him. There's also a lot less detail and variation in the bamboo in various parts of the background. Enemy placement is really kinda borked in this stage on PCE. Once more, all the missing enemies have been replaced by ninjas in a stage that was already filled with ninjas. And ninjas ninja, the ninja ninja ninja, ninja ninja ninja. For the final regular stage, we're missing a bunch of stuff on PCE. We lose the kimono-wearing, staff-wielding monk-type enemies. Can you guess what they replaced them with? That's right, a toaster. Oh no, I meant ninjas. This time, they're super-fast white ninjas. Because of the different and missing enemy types on PCE, this stage feels a lot different than the arcade or even the Master System versions. Also, it's hilarious watching enemies at the opposite height jump around like idiots until you walk past them on the PC engine. Here we are, the final boss at last. I'm pausing the arcade one here because this fight took way longer on PC Engine. The infamous Masked Ninja has all his forms on PCE, but someone at Asmic thought, hey, but what if we make it almost impossible to hit him in his first and second forms? And apparently the development team jumped at the chance to make that happen. Your timing has to be super precise in his first form, and God help you on his second form. I find the easiest thing to do is to lure him into a corner, and then hit him when he rams you and then bounces off you in the second form. The last two forms are a bit easier to deal with, but I will let you know that Ninja Magic only damages him one health point in his final form, so you might want to use that during the Tornado phase instead. Take that, Masked Ninja! Oh, look! We get an ending on the PC Engine version, unlike the Sega Master System one. It's not a great ending, but it matches the arcade and is better than the Game Over screen, I guess.
All right, thanks for sticking around to the end. So I don't know if I made this clear enough during the video, so let me just state unequivocally now that the PC Engine port of Shinobi is an utter disappointment. And that'll do it for this video, my retro gaming friends. If you enjoyed the video, please toss it a like and share it. If you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel for more retro gaming goodness. And tell me, what did you think of the PC Engine version of Shinobi? Have you played it yourself? Do you like it? Are there other versions that you prefer or would like to see me cover here? Go ahead and let me know in the comments. With that, I'll say thanks for watching, and see me later.